Hi, I am Stephanie Wood and I'm an EFT tapping trainer with EFT International and I'm here today to talk about the tapping on the edge technique with the wonderful Manon Sikocha, who is an EFT uh, practitioner also with EFT International. And um, thank you for being here today. Well, thank you for having me. So I have some questions about this. Um, I'm, I was so excited when you told me about this technique and I just, you know, jumped on it and ran and I realized in a short amount of time that this really needs to get out to other EFT practitioners. Like to me, it was that important. So can you tell us a little bit about, um, about how you created this? Where did this come from? Absolutely. Well, I'm really happy um, that it's been it's been useful to you and that you've been having some success with it. Um, essentially, the tapping on the edge technique is simply about getting out of your own head a little bit. And as we know, and as we've all experienced as EFT practitioners or even anyone that does any kind of whether it be psychotherapy or anything that deals with psychological issues or even just the experience of being human. We have all tried in many, many ways to fix any problem that we're having by thinking our way through it and thinking and thinking and thinking, and I must come up with a solution, and I really need to figure it out. How often do we say, oh yeah, not doing so well right now, I, I, just, I just gotta figure this out, it, it'll be fine, I just need to figure it out. And so we get in our heads and we get in our heads, and even when we do the tapping, lots of times we get in our heads. And well, what came up for me was, um, this but yeah that does that doesn't really make any sense so and then we dismiss things that come up and we try to create an experience based on what our logical mind is telling us and so what the edge technique allows us to do is to just to go access that emotion or access whatever it is that we are preventing ourselves from looking at and it is my belief that a lot of times when we are unable to heal, we are protecting ourselves so much from that emotion or from that part of us that we don't allow ourselves to look at it. We don't allow ourselves to go there because that's the painful part. Why would you go and step into the painful part? And we don't need to go and relive a trauma or anything like that. Actually, we want to avoid that. We want to avoid that as, at all costs. And we know all about the whole re-traumatization and all that kind of stuff. So that is not where we want to go. But what we do not let ourselves do is just to look at it. What's there? And that's all we need to do a lot of the time for the emotion to go away. Just, just look at me. I'm over here. I need to be processed. And processed doesn't mean analyzed, doesn't mean relived, doesn't mean any of that. Just acknowledge that I'm there, accept that I'm there, and then I can move. So what I tried to do, especially when we were getting caught up in logic, um, I think it started with, I had a client who could feel lots of things in her body but nothing was really seemed to be processing very quickly and we she would be pulled back into the into this analysis this analysis of everything that was going on but she was able to locate feelings and where they were in, their, in her body. And we could go through the whole series of questions about the, the shape and the texture and the color and how long has it been there? What's it trying to tell you? We could go through all of that. And that was really quite, quite easy for her. But then we got stuck. And so it either wouldn't move, it would grow, something would happen and frustration would set in. And so what we ended up doing is going to the edge. 
And what that means is, so when, once you've got everything laid out, so this feeling's in my chest and it's orange and it's hot and it's kind of this spinny thing and there's something in the middle, I'm not quite sure what it is, but that's okay. And so we would just gather that whole feeling, package it up. Okay, so now there's, there's this thing. Now, if there's this thing where it's painful, there's also another space somewhere else where it's not. And for some people that might be, yeah, so this is in my chest and yeah, I, I know that I feel fine over here. The rest of my body feels fine. Unfortunately, some people feel it everywhere, but then there's a space somewhere outside of them, somewhere outside of them where that pain does not exist. And so we tried to look at where the pain does not exist in my body and where the pain exists. And now we just walk over to the edge. Just go to the edge where that painful part that we just described meets that other part where there is no pain. And you don't have to do anything. In fact, you don't want to do anything. You just go there, just hang out, just look at it, just take a look at it. And what I saw was actually quite fascinating and at first a little bit surprising. The emotion, the emotion would just, as soon as someone would go to the edge, the emotion would be, I don't want to use the word overwhelming because it wasn't overwhelming in that, I see overwhelming as kind of a negative word, but it was just more of a, a permission. Oh my gosh, I didn't know that was there. And I can see it and I can accept it. And so there would be tears or there would be release of some sort. But all I've seen so far is just that release, an emotion that is so surprising because we've been trying so hard to just not access that part ever. That's the painful part. But guess what? We're not going to the painful part. We're going to the edge. And the edge of that painful part is probably that just that border of what we can handle, what it is that we can look at. This is not painful, this is too painful. What, what's right there? And then we just look at it. And sometimes we look at it for a short time, sometimes we look at it for a long time. And I'll ask a few questions and guide. And the release that happens in that moment, in that place, is just beautiful. And you don't think and you don't try to figure it out, you don't analyze it, you just hang out there. You walk around and you can access it from the painful parts. Okay, so you're in that, that, that space that you just described. Now walk to the edge of that. Or if that's, if there's that somewhere they can't go, well, you can access it from the other side. Go to that space where things are fine. And now just walk towards the edge until it's uncomfortable or before it gets uncomfortable, actually. Just that, that edge between the part of you that's fine and the part of you that's not. And the things that happen in that place are just precious. Because what I like to tell my clients is that healing does not need to be painful. If you're here, you have suffered enough. Once that was all done, we would just keep tapping and we'd just tap through and just slowly go to that edge. And really, the, the vocabulary that I would use and the cueing that I would use was one of permission. And just, we do not, we are not going to analyze this. We're not trying to figure out why you feel this way. Is it because of this? Is it because of that? Is that related to this other thing? It does not matter. What we've identified the feeling, the memories there, the, all the bits are there. And now we are going to go to the edge of it. And we are going to look. We're only going to look. That's all we're going to do. We're just going to see what's there, see what's going on. And we're different clients felt comfortable with different things. Some wanted to walk around. Some wanted to just look. Some wanted to feel it. So they would go in and try to feel it a little bit and we could go into the feeling out of the feeling but we would just stay 
and we would watch. And sometimes we watched for a whole session. And what I noticed was that the processing would happen and it would be, they, they would leave grounded, very, very, very grounded. So, so I've also been using it uh, after you explained the process to me um, and I've been found finding that uh, it's really had a surprising impact with clients because when you, and, and because I may have been doing it a little bit differently. Um, and I think that's what I'd like to ask you is how would you suggest as a process to explain it to a practitioner how they can deliver it. So we can either do that as a demo or um, you just explain kind of the steps of how you would lead someone through. I'm, I'm just when you said this now about, um, about it might take the whole session to do that, uh, that, that was surprising to me because I'm, I'm curious how you, how you navigate that, them to hang out and explore that. Um, but what has been surprising to me using it is just the different reactions that people have to that and and also the different visuals that people have which is always fascinating um i'm also my mantra for my work is no pain no pain <laughs> so i'm totally there with you know like let's see what we can do to, to move away from that uh some i had one client and when i said go to the edge she she imagined that she was on niagara falls like it was like an edge of something and other people they just kind of it's an awareness sitting on the edge of a bubble or you know wherever that is um, and I guess my question to you would be, you know, how, how as a practitioner specifically would they guide a client through, like, what are the steps? Um, what do they do? So maybe you could just uh, speak to that of like the steps that you would take to, to take a client through that process. So whether you're at a core belief, specific memory or anything that we typically would, um, get that sense that it's time to start tapping on that specific specific item what I would do at that point is just to um, to go into the emotion so what emotion is associated with that or if you had to guess at what emotion is associated with that not something that you need to really really be feeling right now or go there and I know that you probably haven't gone there in years or maybe you haven't got there in years maybe you're there all the time we're just going to go with that emotion and we're going to find it. We're going to see what it looks like because it's always in the body. And for those people that say, I can't feel it in my body. Well, right away, that gives me other very, very important, important clues about, about what's going on for that, that person. And then, well, I handled that, that particular case in a slightly different way, but for anybody that's in tune with their, with their body, what we'll do is just the normal, just like chasing the pain, we'll just go and find it. So where do you feel that in your body? And then if we get an, I don't know, then we'll, if it, if it was in your body somewhere, where would it be? And then I might even ask the questions like, well, what, um, if it had a message for you, what would that message be? All of these questions that the, the, the reasoning behind my questioning at that point is just to get them in touch with that part. Just whatever that part is, just make it as familiar as possible. And so we might go be looking at colors and textures and um, temperatures and all that kind of nice stuff until we've got uh, another entity, another entity that exists that we can really, that, that becomes really, really tangible. And so once that becomes tangible, then sometimes it's comfortable, sometimes it's uncomfortable. And we'll just kind of tap on it a little bit and just kind of accept it and accept that it's there. And one thing that I like to do to be able to accept it is, um, is we just tap through and we just kind of notice, notice it. We just notice that it's there. It's just there. It's just hanging out. And um, we notice we really want it to be there, but we can, we can deal with that. We can accept it. And then you know, maybe, maybe we can even invite him in and offer him a cup of tea, get him to sit down. And everybody loves the cup of tea. Everybody loves offering their emotion a cup of tea. And then once they offer them a cup of tea and they sit down, they're like, oh yeah, we're cool. It's okay. We're good. We're good. We got this. So once we're at the stage where we can have tea together, then we're ready. And so we'll just talk a little bit how, you know, 
this might, what's in there? Your body has not been wanting you to look at it for a really long time. But at the same time, it has wanted you a little to look at it. And that's why, that's why we feel it in there. So it's kind of like this tug of war a little bit. Part of me doesn't want to look at it because I feel safer that way. Whatever happened there, that wasn't safe. And ever since then, I've been told to stay out. And I've been listening because I don't want to feel that way again. Well, I don't want you to feel that way either. And I know you don't want to feel that way. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go look. We're not gonna feel it or get in there. We're gonna go look. Now, how are we gonna do that? Well, we're not gonna jump in the center. So most people, once they've had tea with their emotion and they know where it is, they can kind of go where it is, but then what, right? So I'll get them to close their eyes and just be with that, that emotion without, without being in there. Just, just notice what it looks like and, um, I'll cue them through all the things they've told me about it and remind them that they're just having tea and they're fine. And then we'll tap through the point, we'll start tapping through the points. And as we're tapping, we're gonna make our way to the edge. Now just, just, just go to the edge of that emotion and without much more cueing, because you want it to be their edge. If it's gonna be Niagara Falls, it's Niagara Falls. If it's gonna be the moon, it's gonna be the moon. If it's gonna be the hub at, or the hatch at the International Space Station, well, that's what it's gonna be. And that's your edge, and that's wonderful. So once we get to the edge, then a lot of times there's emotion, and the emotion has gone from delight, that they can just be there and it's not a big deal, to just, just tears and tears and tears of, well, surprise tears of release. And they'll just say, I, I'm not sad, I'm not scared, I'm just, I don't know, I'm just crying. Of course, that's <laughs> just nice release. You know, I'm allowed to be there. And so we'll look around and then um, if, as long as there's still emotion or as long as there's still any desire to be there, we'll hang out and then will be cueing stuff like we're just looking we're just just taking a look just sitting down and we can even go into that feeling see what it feels like we can go in we can go out it's just a feeling that's all it is and remind reminders of the present of the here and now and we're just here and that's just an emotion and it's just there in my body and it just wants it doesn't want to harm me it's always, and we might thank it. We might thank it a lot. Just, oh look, it's just been wanting to protect me. And of course I don't want to look at all that. And all these nice reminders of what, what it is, what's going on, what it means without getting cognitive about it. Just, just looking. We're just hanging out and just looking. And then, so we'll stop tapping and we'll do the, we'll test a little bit and see how, like, how the shape is changing. If it's, um, just to see if it's, it's releasing at all. And we may or may not be taking suds. I usually start with the suds before we start the, going on the edge. And then when I, when I get out, just to, to check on things, then I'll, uh, I'll usually take some suds. And then if anything's changed, which most times it does quite quickly, then I'll ask them, did you, did you want to go back to the edge? See what's, she was, see what's there now? Let's just, let's go look. Let's just go look. We might see something. We might not see anything. We'll just go hang out. And so they'll go back to the edge. And that's when they get curious. Because by that time, most people are out of their heads. They don't need to figure it out anymore. It's just happening. It's just unraveling. And they want to watch that movie. They want to see what's there. They're not so scared anymore. And lots of times we'll get as far as, well, there's always a new edge because it gets smaller and smaller, but then we'll get to a place where they're like, oh, oh, now I'm just seeing photographs, just photographs fly out. Oh, it's on the photographs. 
the photo, there's just the memories. It's the memories. And then there's photographs are flying. But the reason they could get the, to these photographs is that they just went from the outside in and saw what they could handle and that they could just look at it. And when, by the time they get to the photographs, that's what they do with the photographs. They just look at them. And lots of times, they don't even stop moving. They're just going out the window or they're getting blown in the wind. And then we're done. And that's it. And then the suds go down to zero and we're free. But the nice thing about that is that if we don't get to that part, we're still okay because we're going like this and it's very contained where it's their edge. So have you been finding that the clients that you're using that with, um, what is their experience in that next 24 to 48 hours? Once we started working with the edge, when people left, I felt like they were strong. They had power. They were calm. They were grounded. And they were different than when they walked in. So in terms of the actual technique, um, so from, from the way that you've described it, it sounds like it's, and the way that I've been using it too, is the client is tapping the whole time, right? You're tapping and that they, um, you're using kind of like a guided, you're guiding them with words in and out of that. And so is that correct? Is that? Also ask questions. And ask, okay, okay. Um, and having them bring go-to or I hadn't, I hadn't used that word that kind of wording when I was doing it, I said, you know, bring your awareness too, but I, I think it's the same exact thing as go to. Um, so when you say you kind of pull someone in and out of it, how, how does that, what does that look like? Um, I, when you had explained it to me the first time I was playing with that and when, when I brought someone back, I was like, so try to go to a different side of it or behind it or under it or <laughs> so like a different side, just to see if, if there hadn't been movement the first time. Um, so what, how do you, what do you do with that? So um, you would do that, you mean if there hasn't, if you pull them out and there hasn't been any movement or just simply how to pull out? Yeah, I actually hadn't, when I had done it, I hadn't spent time with them there. We just kind of went in, hung out, had an awareness of the, there's the thing and here's the space where it doesn't exist. So, okay. okay, like to really bring their awareness to, there's a lot of space where this thing doesn't exist <laughs> because sometimes turning their awareness away from it is also helpful when you're hanging out on the edge of it and having a cup, I love that, having a cup of tea or having a cup of coffee, which depends on the person maybe. <laughs> but, uh, a little coffee with it. Um, so, so, uh, so because I didn't realize you were hanging out there longer, I was pulling them out pretty quickly and just like, okay, let's do something else and then come back and sort of touch it and leave. But it sounds to me like you kind of, hang out there and explore a little bit and I hadn't tried that so that that was really helpful to hear that you're guiding them that way okay 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 so what um I think I understand what you're asking me <laughs> so when we so we go we hang out and then the same as when you're doing a round of tapping sometimes you'll do one round sometimes you'll do two and you'll have the reminder, but then at some point, you'll just stop, and then they'll stop. And so I do the same thing. So we'll just tap through, and we'll be walking around, or we'll be just, just looking, just observing. And if there's emotion, of course, I'll, I'll stay there. If it seems comfortable, they'll just, they're releasing something, and we'll just observe, just watching. And then um, after a while, after... Um, a few rounds. I'll just ask them to take a deep breath. Now we're just gonna take a deep breath and we'll just let it all go. And then I will just ask the regular questions. So how do you feel now? And what does it look like now? So when you, from, from, from where you are now, when you take a look at that, I'll describe it a little bit the way they had or that situation or that whatever's going on in the body. So I'll just focus on the, the shapes and sizes and whatnot that we were looking at and they'll look at it and then they'll tell me if it's changed and then I'll take a suds and then it's, if the emotions are the same or if they're different or uh, which one seems more important now. So kind of like that reset that you do in between rounds just to see where, where, where you're at. 
And then once I've got new studs, and then I'll ask them if there's anything different about about this um, this entity, the same way that we'll would do with um, chasing the pain. And then once they describe it again and we're ready to go again, we'll just go back. And I might ask them what what direction they want to take if they want to go from the outside in. If there's something they notice somewhere they somewhere in particular on the edge that they want to go, or if they just want to to just go back and lots of times they just want to go back and then as soon as we go back they're like oh yeah it's so small or it's so different and then we'll just we'll hang out and we'll spend some time there and come out again and then do the same same checks and i'll ask them my 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 first question to them when we come out is what do you do what do you, what do you notice now and then noticing gives you permission to talk about um, a feeling, a situation, a memory. Um, I liked being on the edge. Like, noticing can be anything. Or I need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> it's what are you noticing? And then we'll go into the more more specifics until until we go back. Cool. That is very cool. So yeah. So um, wow. I think that you have described that really thoroughly. And um, I guess. I mean, I don't think we're going to do a demo right now, but I think at some point, if anyone does want to see a demo, uh, that could be arranged, uh, if that's something you want to do. Um, but we could stop for now. And is there anything else that you want to add about it? I feel like I've kind of rambled on and on about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's fascinating. And honestly, like having, I've been using it all the time now. And it's just been so... It, it's so crazy how effective it is. Like it's so effective in a in a way that's just different and so gentle. Like of the gentle techniques of the, I wouldn't even call it necessarily a sneaking up technique because you don't even necessarily have to go in. That's it. Like that's the end. That's the you're there. And then every time with people, it's just shifted it either the whole image shifts or it moves or, I mean, it's just been quite profound how simple and elegant it is. And that was why I really felt it was important to share this with other people. I'm like, you've got a really elegant, um, elegant tool. So. And the client can own it. It's yes. theirs and you cannot get in their way. You're not on that edge with them. So you can't infer, you can't say the wrong, make the wrong inference or go too fast or not use the exact correct words. Or is that the word you used? You can't make those human mistakes. You can make other human mistakes. <laughs> There's lots of those to be made. <laughs> They're easy. But it also, it also is such a neutral thing. And there's nothing to do. That's the other piece I like about it. It's like, you're not like, okay, go do this. Try and do this without her. There's just a being with. And being with, it's almost like presencing the, the, the thing. And it is such a healing thing as humans just be with. And we're so bad at it. We've become so bad at it. We want to think our way out of everything. And just one last thing before we go. Um, this morning, actually, I was meditating. And one of the things that kept coming to me, and I, I, I'm trying to get, I'm always trying to get away from the thinking and more into the being. And I've been, we've talked about this before, I've been a little bit stuck and I've been in a place where there's, there's this whole thing that's fine and then over here it's fine and there's this little barrier and anyway, I've described it to you, but um, this little barrier where it's very, very uncomfortable and I feel it in my body and everything. And so I'm always trying to come back to just being, into being, into being. And of course that's been very helpful. But one thing that dawned on me was that I have decided sometime that being was the opposite of doing. I got to stop doing and I got to be, be more. Or do being. <laughs> but they're not separate. And what we're bad at, I know I'm particularly bad at it, but I'm becoming better, is that presence is not a dichotomy between being and doing presence can be both presence is both 
Presence is doing while being. You can be doing the dishes present. You can be working present. You can be doing all the things. And the key is to have both coexist. It is not a dichotomy. There's not being or doing or thinking or feeling. It's you can put them together and then be a full person. And I find that to be really key with this tapping on the edge where you're, it's okay to just be, you don't have to try to fix it, but you're still there and you're still processing and doing something, but you're just present in that place. And that, to give yourself permission to do that, to be that, to do be that. <laughs> it's a new thing. I think we might need to term. <laughs> there needs to be a new term for that. Doobie. Doobie. <laughs> You're doing. <laughs> that, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me. That was really oh, fun. Well, thank you. That was awesome. And uh, I hope that people try it. And uh, we'd love to hear from you about your experience with it and if you have any questions about it. So um, thank you, Fennel, for coming. And uh, I will talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Thank you.